सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली यू मस्ट हैव रेड एंड वॉच लॉर्ड ऑफ स्टफ है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वन ट्वेंटीमेंट बिल और वुमेन्स रिजर्वेशन बिल You hear Prime Minister Narendra Modi talking about it almost daily since the Parliament cleared it, and you will keep hearing about it till the 2024 Lok Sabha election, at least, especially from BJP politicians. What I'm going to talk about in this episode of Politically Correct is how Women's Reservation Bill has made it all the more necessary for the BJP to have Narendra Modi at its face, not just in 2024 Lok Sabha election, but also in 2029 and even beyond. But before I come to this point there are three things that i would like to point out first the wrong perception about winability of women candidates something many politicians tell you in private second the ambiguity in the bill especially about the time frame for its implementation if you read the fine print you can draw whatever conclusions you may want to depending on your political leanings for those who believe in the government's version there is enough in the bill and in the explanations by ministers to feel convinced that women's quota in the lok sabha and state assemblies will be implemented in 2029 and for those who think that it's just a jumla and an election gimmick there is enough in the bill in and in the explanations of ministers to suggest that the quota will not be imp- implemented until 2034 election if at all and my third point is about how the bjp has been reluctant to promote women in its organization and even in the government and my arguments will be based on data and facts after i make all these three points i'll come to the main subject as to why the bjp now has one more compelling reason to stick with pm modi as the face in 2029 and beyond he turned 73 last week but the party just can't afford to let him retire even in 2029 let me first come to the first point about winability of female candidates you will be surprised to know that in the bjp women have been better or at par with men when it comes to their winability or strike rate in elections in terms of how many of them are fielded in elections and how many of them win my colleague uh, amog romethra has done a brilliant analysis of the winability factor in the past 6 lok sabha elections uh, since 1998 in 2019 lok sabha election about 75% of women who contested on bjp tickets won for men it was 69% in 2014 election 79% of the women fielded by the bjp won for men this was 65% the fact is that in the past 6 lok sabha elections female candidates had better strike rates than men in four elections in the remaining two in 1998 and 2004 they were at par when you look at this data you really wonder why the bjp hasn't been fielding more women in elections only 12.61% of the bjp candidates in 2019 were women this episode is focused on the bjp in the context of how it's making women's quota a pole plank and so i'm not getting into other parties record but let me tell you a few data points about the congress in the last six elections it was only in 99 and 2009 that congress party's female candidates had a better strike rate than men in the other four it was less in 2019 lok sabha election for instance the success rate of congress's female candidate was 11.11% for men it was 12.53% in 2014 it was 6.67% for women and 9.9 for men for a party led by a woman sonia gandhi for so long these figures are counterintuitive for sure anyway returning to the bjp a uh, women's success rate more than doubled after narendra modi became its face in 2009 their strike rate was 37.50% that went up to 79% in 
Anyway, my colleague Amog Rahmetra's piece will have a lot more details. Please do look it up on our website. Coming to the second point, that's uh, about ambiguities in a women's reservation bill. There are already many ifs when it comes to its implementation. The bill says that reservation of seats will come into force after delimitation is undertaken, quote unquote, for this purpose. And when will del delimitation start? The bill says after the figures for the first census taken after commencement of this act have been published. As Amit Shah has clarified, the census will start after 2024 election. After the figures of this census have been published, say sometime in 2000, delimitation will start. That process may take at least 2-3 years. That's why opposition parties believe that women's quota will not come into place even in 2029. But of course, uh, the government can expedite these, th uh, these processes. That's why I said in the beginning, take your pick. There are other com complexities here. Uh, during Atal Bihari Vajpayee government, relevant articles of the constitution were amended to provide that no fresh readjustment of constituencies could be undertaken until the figures of the first census taken after 2026 were published. I'm not a legal expert. I'm just going by the text of the Constitution 128th Amendment brought in by the Modi government last week and the text of the Constitution 84th Amendment brought in by the Vajpayee government in 2001. As per the 2001 Amendment, census has to be conducted after 26 to form the basis for delimitation of constituencies. But as per 2023 Amendment, census can start after 2024 election and delimitation can be done on that basis. Both are of course not the same. One could think that, well, the Modi government can bring in another amendment to change that 2026 provision in the 2001 amendment. But then ruling party speakers in the Lok Sabha and Ras Sabha kept speaking about 2026 freeze, clearly ind indicating that there is no plan to amend that. There is another catch here. Let's go back to what I said about the Constitution 120th Amendment uh, Amendment Bill, which says that reservation of seats will come into force after delimitation is done for this purpose, quote unquote. Mind you, it may mean for the purpose of identifying only seats to be reserved for women, not the overall redrawing of constituencies of all the constituencies that have been pending for 50 years. That's my interpretation because the government has not really clarified these points. And so there are so many ambiguities. By the way, Amit Shah said in the Lok Sabha that, that the reservation will be implemented only after 29, quote unquote. And therefore, don't discount the possibility of someone going to the court to challenge the provisions of the 2023 law or the delimitation commission's report. That means further delay. So if you ask me if women's reservation will come into force in 2029, my answer will be, Yes and no. Now let me come to the third point about how talented women don't really seem to get their dues when it, when it comes to their promotion in the BJP. And again, because it's, it's a, you can say that why aren't you talking about other parties, but I'm talking about the BJP because we are talking in the context of how the party is trying to uh, basically showcase that women's resolution bill in the run up to the 2024 election. So let me give you some data points. There have been 11 national BJP presidents since the party was founded in 1980. Not a woman out of those 11. No woman among nine national general secretaries today. One woman in 11 member parliamentary board, the party's top decision making body. Two women in 15 member central election committee. Two women out of 36 state union territory BJP presidents. No woman among 12 CMs and deputy CMs. In fact, the party has not even followed its own constitution that mandates a one-third quota for women in its national executive. There are only 14 women in 19 member executive today. There are many other data points that you may find in this story done by my colleague uh, Neelam Pandyan Amogra Mitra. There are only two women among PM Modi's 28-member cabinet. 
फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन एंड वुमेन एंड चाइल्ड डेवलपमेंट मिनिस्टर स्मृति ईरानी चेक आउट हाउ मेनी पब्लिक मीटिंग्स द बीजेपी आस्ट डेम टू एड्रेस एंड हाउ इट्स सेलिब्रेटेड देम एट द पार्टीज फेस इन कर्नाटका कर्नाटका इलेक्शन सीतारमन हु इज रिगार्डेड एज ए कंपिटेंट फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर बाय मेनी एक्सपर्ट्स एंड एनालिस्ट डिड नॉट इवन फिगर इन द बीजेपी लिस्ट ऑफ फोर्टी स्टार कैंपेनर्स इन हिमाचल प्रदेश एज फॉर स्मृति ईरानी डिस्पाइट बींग ए जॉइंट किलर इन अमेठी एंड जनरली बींग एक्नोलेज एज अ वेरी स्मार्ट पॉलिटिशियन एंड मिनिस्टर she has to be happy with the low profile ministry of women and child development and a uh, minority affairs of course her competence aside she has been tossed around as a minister from the hrd to information and broadcasting to textiles and not wcd as for other women leaders bjp insiders tell me that pm modi hasn't really granted requests for a one on one meeting with vasundhara raje for the past one year the reason She didn't follow the command of the party bosses in Delhi in her politics or governance. Her son Dushyant, a Dune school and Saint Stephen's uh, alumnus, has been given no responsibility in the party or the government, despite the fact that he has won all four Lok Sabha elections since 2004. Look at Uma Bharti, who led the BJP to a sweeping victory in 2003 Madhya Pradesh Assembly election. she had to resign as the cm the very next year because of a uh, hubli right case but even after the congress led government in karnataka which withdrew that case a few months later she was never reinstalled as the chief minister sushma swaraj the bjp's biggest woman face and the external affairs minister who won so many hearts by her proactive responses on social media to whoever needed needed her help was left out of the modi led ministry in 2019 in her book titled uh, she the leader women in indian politics my friend and author nidhi sharma has quoted a former aide of sushma swaraj as saying that she was not expecting to be left out she was expecting a call in fact she checked if a call had come on the landline because maybe mobile network was not working she went to the swearing in ceremony uh, to the rashtrapati bhavan half expecting that there could be a slip up in calling her now that came from one of her aides i mean who told uh, author nidhi sharma about uh, all this all this uh, about what she was thinking anyway this episode is getting too long uh, let me come to the main subject be that as it may the bjp has good reasons to hope that reservation will give another reason to women to rally behind pm modi and the party in 2023 assembly and 2024 lok sabha elections whether they will or won't is a matter of conjecture and speculation the fact is that the women's quota bill may pose challenges to to the bjp in future given the sort of delimitation hanging on their heads mps in the next lok sabha won't have any incentive to work in their constituencies who knows what will happen after delimitation what if their seats get, get reserved as women that will be the case for mps from all parties but it's especially so in the case of bjp mps most of whom when not because of who they are or what they have done for the people but because of only one factor modi so think of the scenario in 2029 many sitting male mps will have spent all their time after 2024 making alternative plans if their constituencies get reserved for women they may hope to get lucky but it can't be an incentive to work for the people for 5 years there will be many others including female candidates contesting election for the first time in 2029 all of them will be banking on modi's popularity it's not just his persona as a saint like leader that makes him popular among women voters his schemes like swachh bharat beti bachao beti padhao free food grains during covid 19 Ujjwala, Ujjwala scheme, piped water scheme, and a host of other schemes have touched their lives. There is no other leader in the BJP who has got that connect with women voters. That's also the reason why he will remain the party's only hope if he gets a third term in office in 2024, but fails to deliver on women's quota by 2029 in terms of implementing it. There are of course other BJP leaders like uh, UP CM Yogi Adityanath. his assam counterpart himanta biswas sharma and a few others who have shown potential but can they replace modi among his women constituency 
Yogi has transformed himself, of course. I mean, he is not the rabble rouser that he was before he became the CM. He has let his anti Romeo squads fall into oblivion while he launches programs like Mission Shakti for women entrepreneurs and earn goodwill among them through his programs like see, One District, One Product. Yet, as of now, Yogi needs to do a lot more to earn the kind of goodwill that Modi has among women voters. I have mentioned above how the BJP has not really promoted women leaders with mass base and popularity. To make it worse, there are incidents like, you know, women being paraded naked and raped in Manipur, in which the BJP-led government faced a lot of flack for laxity. Then comes the party's refusal to act against MP Bridge Bhushan Saran Singh, who faced serious allegations by celebrated female wrestlers. The BJP has even refused to sack Haryana Minister Sandeep Singh, despite charges of alleged sexual harassment. That gives an impression of the BJP being patriarchal. That is, even when more and more women are voting for the BJP, or let's say for PM Modi, given the new challenges the BJP will have in 2029 and even beyond, whether women's quota is implemented or not, the party can look up to only one man again in 2029. Nain Modi. That's all for me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.